Welcome to Creativity, the podcast where art and engineering collide. In this podcast, we discuss our personal creative endeavors ranging from woodworking to electronics, arts and life in general. My name is Max Maker and this is my co-host, Jeremy S. Cook. Hi, everybody. Our special guests tonight are Mike and Ryan from Physics Anonymous. Hello. Hey, what's going on? The two of them are brothers and together they filmed a number of amazing projects like a motorized camera slider and a cake machine. And of course, a long-term project, they're rebuilding a lathe completely from the ground up. Jeremy actually is over at Mike's house tonight and they're recording the podcast together while I'm stuck here in good old Germany. But it shouldn't be a hurdle. So how are you guys doing tonight? Oh, not too bad. Yeah, great. Really good, really good. I didn't realize quite how, um, you know, we're in Orlando, I didn't realize quite how wide Orlando is. <laughs> it's, um, took me, took me what, about 45 minutes to get from one side to another. Yep. So, yep. but it's great to be here with a nice, nice little neighborhood. Hopefully your HOA doesn't give you good crap about running <laughs> Oh, we business. could do a whole podcast on our HOA. <laughs> okay, well. We'll leave them out of it. <laughs> okay, well, we'll leave that out. But um, anyway, they, they've they got quite the pad here. It's uh, definitely, uh, definitely a bachelor pad, which is awesome, but they keep it, Keep it reasonably clean, which is which is great. <laughs> yeah, we, we we both have pretty uh, pretty awesome girlfriends that make sure that we uh, we stay on track a little bit with the cleanliness. <laughs> yeah, just just wait till you have children and they're just destroying it. Children are awesome, but at the same time they uh, <laughs> they do. Uh, well, I'll just I'll just say it. They have, have a uh, climbing wall in their in their uh, dining room, so I can only imagine. <laughs> you know, I've got a one year old and a three year old. I'm sure they would be climbing to the top by now, or at least a three year old. And you know, you got to watch. Uh, Got to make sure they don't uh, injure themselves, of course. <laughs> but but yeah, Max. I mean, you know, I know you brought you uh, you brought that whole uh, climbing. Was it the climbing volume? I believe. Yeah, so I just made a climbing volume. Yeah. So these guys have actually made a full wall in their in their living oh, room. Oh, that's cool. That's yeah. really cool. In a living yeah. room. Yeah, it's it's funny. Uh, you know, living here, we we kind of forget it's there. It just it's part of the backdrop. And when when somebody new walks in. And they go, oh my gosh, you know, as soon as they see it, we're like, what? Oh, that thing. Yeah, that thing's there. But yeah, it's, it's, uh, we have 12 foot ceilings. Uh, yeah, 12 or 14 foot ceilings. And uh, so it, it's, it's, what about it spans, 16, 18 feet wide? I think it's a little more, yeah, about, tw I think it's about yeah. 20 feet wide. And uh, it's, it's pretty impressive to stand in front of. I mean, it, it's not, nothing more than a bouldering wall, of course, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's. Yeah, it was pretty fun. They, they let me try it out while you were waiting for me to, uh, to log on and get set up. So. <laughs> That's what that's what took so long. <laughs> oh, that's really cool. I once built one myself in the uh, front oh. yard, uh, and the back wall was adjustable, nice. angle adjustable, so from uh, vertical all the way to horizontal. But then, uh, like half a year later, a uh, commercial gym opened up in my town, which we didn't have mm -hmm. before, so we never used it anymore. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Yeah, ours is it's four modules that can be uh, rotated and and change position so we can change it up a little bit yeah oh, so it can be mounted upside down or right side up and in any number of the four positions so if we get bored of the way it's configured we can just change it around and they're all different shapes and of course the handholds can be moved around yeah. and all that too yep no i, I was noticing your handhold yeah. I'm, I'm not a good bowling person by any mm -hmm. means but it's not what what, what skill level are they set up for Oh, is it, is it uh, they're maybe like a little bit beyond beginner or something. Okay. Um, I think when you get much past where we're at, you tend to have small foot chips and some real difficult volumes that don't have much to grip onto and things like that. But these are you know, something that have a good good amount of grip surface, mm -hmm. and some of them have you know kind of that jug handle that you can grab too. Yeah, we, we kind of wanted a, a big mix of stuff because you know a lot of people that come into the house never rock climb before, so we make sure it's accessible to everybody, including our, our small nieces. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which honestly, they're, they're probably better than we are at this point. <laughs> nice. Well, let's see. Did, did you guys actually buy the handholds <laughs> or did you make those yourselves? We bought those. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Purchase. In fact, there's a, I don't remember the guy's name, but he, it's one guy that makes them and he just sits in his garage and molds the, the clay or whatever it's made out of to different shapes and throws it in a bucket. Really, that's yeah. the one you, yeah, I think the resin is so expensive that it's not worth it making a few yeah, for yourself. Sounds about right. I had a um, what they got a hangboard, I guess, for a while, and that was uh, that was good to work out on. But yeah, you know, then we moved out of our house and had to remove it, and you know, just wow, this looks really ugly for you know for resale value. So yeah. I'd like to make a campusing board or something. <laughs> yep. at some point. I think that would be fun. Yep. Uh, I'm not a fan of campusing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was pretty sure the Germans invented campusing for that, but yeah. oh, maybe. But I, I once heard this. I'm not very good at campusing. I'm, I'm a decent climber, not campusing. I once heard this um, 
phrase. Uh, if you want to be a better climber, practice climbing, not campusing. <laughs> so that's my excuse for not doing yeah. campusing. Yeah, yeah you're, you're really just looking to show off, I think, with campusing. Uh, yeah. uh, well, you know, if you can, why not? That's right, that's right. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> but yeah, I know I need much more uh, core body strength at this point. Mm -hmm. I waste a lot of energy in my arms just because I lack it in my uh, core body. So that's what yeah. I'm working on right now. Yeah. yeah, I think I'm about the same. I, I'm i trying to unlearn all of the bad habits that I got by having good upper body strength. Yeah. And <laughs> it's funny, you know, speaking of people that have never climbed before, a lot of times, you know, we'll, we'll, got, we'll get guys in that, that hit the gym three days a week, you know, and they're built and they get on and they're they're completely worn out in you know, in three or four minutes of climbing because they don't use that much of their hand muscles and all that. And then you get you yeah. get a 110 pound girl and she can go for, for half an hour on the wall, with no problem because she's using her legs and not her arms. And, <laughs> yeah. and yeah, else. Guys, guys tend to just power <laughs> through it in the, in the long run, it's a pro bad habit. Yeah. Yeah. You, you don't get this great be uh, beach body from <laughs> climbing. <laughs> Well, you know, we, we know all about that being in Florida, Max. You know, I know, you know, we uh, we go surfing all the time, and you know, last 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 hurricane, of course, of course we were all out there on the Gulf Coast, just uh, you know, yeah, yeah, we're just showing, showing up right? for the ladies with our uh, with our beach bodies. I detect a little sarcasm in Jeremy's voice. I'm not yeah, yeah, I guess sure. I guess my wife wouldn't like that too much now that I. Well, you know, you, you have to remember he's got kids, so. Fair enough. Well, you know, I need to be in good shape so I, you know, hopefully survive till the, uh, I don't know, just to see them get married and, and such. Well, I got good news for you. One of my future projects is a motorized surfboard. So let's take some energy. Yeah. Oh, I want to build one too. <laughs> We're right on track, Max. So like, you know, what, uh, when we get your email about the podcast, we're wondering, you know, oh, what kind of guys are these? Are they into the same stuff we are? We're going to have stuff to talk about. And the first two videos I saw were the motorized camera slider and the, uh, the climbing volume. And I'm like, okay, I think, yeah. I think we'll get along. Uh, and yours is really similar, right? What features does yeah, yours, very, yours have? Very similar. Uh, mine has two motors so that I can do... Uh, panning? I can do, yeah, panning as, as well as the sliding which is really nice for time lapses, you know, so we, we can focus on one subject and still have that, that uh, linear motion to it. Now, yeah. now, you're, now your slider though, it doesn't use a, the motor is actually located on the head, correct? Correct, yeah, both, there's, there's both no, are. There's no, um, what's, why is the word? Like <laughs> a belt drive? Now. What's that? Like a belt drive? There's no belt drive, exactly. Right. Yeah, it, it just, the, the feature of this particular slider that I got didn't, it didn't suit itself at all to a belt drive. That was my initial plan with it, but there just wasn't quite enough room. And I decided if I put all of the electronics in the in the head, I wouldn't have to run any cables or anything like that. It'd be a little more compact. Yeah, uh, it's got its advantages and disadvantages. The the gripper wheel, the friction wheel um, that's on the head isn't that good. So if it's if it gets overloaded, it'll slide. It has to be fairly level. I can't do it at an angle, otherwise it'll slide. So uh, just like you, Max, I'm planning on building a new one. I've got a whole, yeah. <laughs> whole completely different design. So uh, that'll be another future project. I, I get requests for people like on YouTube. Oh, can I buy you one? Can I buy one? Yep. And yep. I always tell them four hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> they never reply. That's good. Yeah, you always name a price because right. you know it's got to be worth it to you at some point, right? Yeah. So. Oh, but what I notice uh, is there is a lag for a quick board to just run a stepper motor. You know, mm -hmm. just connect the stepper motor to four leads to a little board, have a little display, and just a speed dial. Yep. Mm -hmm. It doesn't exist, or at least I, yeah. I'm not aware of it. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we good that good product, could. product idea. Yeah. Actually, I mean, yeah. well, something like Tindy or something, you could sell, sell it on there, I guess, or eBay or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, That's what I was referring to. Oh, <laughs> so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess we've got a couple of those things floating around that seem like just these real simple kind of builder block parts that seem not exist. That don't exist, yeah. And uh, I don't yeah. know, something they can plug into an Arduino, even yeah. if it is like yep. an Arduino itself. Because, you know, the, the maker world exploded in the last mm -hmm. decade, and th there's still a gap between a consumer product and a maker-level kit piece, you yeah. know? And I think there's a lot of people that, that they'll, they'll become makers, but they, they don't want to jump right in. And they've got to they gotta have something that they know that they can just kind of plug and play that isn't necessarily a consumer product. So. Yeah. That electrical engineering side is a big hurdle get over. Oh, absolutely. Start, right? Absolutely. You know, coding in Arduino is, is very straightforward. I mean, there's a ton of tutorials out there. And just depending on what you're building, most of that stuff is available and kind of shows you which resistors you use and, you know, that sort of thing. But as soon as you get past that, 
Yeah. Oh, and it, it gets it's scary. It's so e it's so easy to destroy equipment in yeah. electronics. I've I've released the smoke quite a times myself. So, uh, you know, you end up wasting a lot of money. So to to build products that are kind of immune to that sort of thing would be a big deal too. That would help. Yeah. So so now you guys um, you work for you know a big technology company. I guess I don't know if I should say their name or not. But um, what is what is your background as far as? So yeah, the the back both Ryan and I's background is a little strange. Um, I could tell you our, our major in college was fine arts, which is a, which we kind of deviated from quite a bit in our professional careers, um, because both of us I think would classify ourselves as engineers, um, mm -hmm. and that has a lot to do with with our upbringing. Our dad was a NASA engineer for forty years and, uh -huh. and imparted a, a huge amount of knowledge on us, um, and more yeah. more than knowledge, uh, problem solving uh, mentality. You know, right. there, there wasn't. A, a thing you couldn't learn. You know, we grew up in the internet age, and if, if we didn't know how to do it, we'd look it up. And that's kind of how we've moved forward from there. Uh, and, you know, we, Brian and I have both been part of a program called Odyssey of the Mind. If you haven't heard of it, I highly recommend you look it up. Yeah. It's an amazing uh, uh, future problem solving uh, program for, for kids anywhere from, from uh, uh, kindergarten to college. Yep, kindergarten to uh, college. Yeah, any. Any uh, you know social background or anything yeah. like that? I know Germany does have a program as yep. well. It's I an international program. World finals every year. Yeah, Florida happens to be one of the one of the largest uh, uh, states for Odyssey of the Mind. Mm -hmm. Full disclosure: our mother was the uh, uh, director of the uh, Florida Odyssey of the Mind program. Ryan is now the assistant Good. director, I mm -hmm. believe. We have a different director now, of course. Yep. Yeah, but uh, when she moved on, they, I got to move up. So, oh, that's yeah. really good. Yeah, it's a phenomenal program. It just the the focus is you know creative problem solving, and the uh, big difference between that and almost all of the others is uh, you know most other things want some sort of parent involvement or you know some some type of uh, yep. adult leadership involved in that, and in this all of that's heavily penalized. So it's it's really up to the kids to. Yep. They have to. They have to do all the solving themselves. Yeah, it's so you go into the schools and give them tasks and uh, tools to do it. So it's it's a kind of an after school program. The mm -hmm. the teams meet up in their own time and and work on stuff. The school doesn't provide any facilities or anything like that. Yeah, um, it's sort of broken up into two parts. The main one there's five problems to choose from. They have a couple of months to solve that. Uh, almost all teams that show up will have solved it, but you know how creatively is sort of what determines how how well they do and how far they go. Uh, and then the other half of that is they walk into a room the day of competition, they're given something, you know, kind of a live problem and say, you know, you have two minutes to think about it and five minutes to respond to it, go. Yeah. You know. They call that spontaneous for yeah. obvious reasons. Click on your feet. And the other the other component of the problem solving is is a skit. So it's mm -hmm. it's not only uh, engineering thing like first robotics or that type of thing, but it also has a ton of art in it, mm -hmm. and that that combination um, has influenced both our careers quite a bit. You know, we yeah. I, I think we did a poor job differentiating between that engineering side and the art side as a result. Absolutely, it, to great benefit. Yeah. So, so well, we could see it in your videos. They're entertaining and the engineering at the same time. <laughs> well, thank you. I yeah, sure. appreciate that. And so that goes back to the where our careers ended up now. So. Uh, like Jeremy said, we work for for a, a technology company and a defense contractor, and but we but even in those jobs, we we ride the line between engineering and art. Mm -hmm. So my my job title is a multimedia design engineer. So we do a lot of uh, 3D product design, prototype concept sketches. Uh, I also do a lot of video production at work, which is where I got that skill set. Mm -hmm. um, and Ryan is a, is a, more of a software engineer. Uh, with an art component there too, doing web pages and right. I work for uh, kind of a communications department, and so it's building a lot of the infrastructure behind what they need to reach out to the world. And uh, before that was uh, data visualization and prototype engineering at NASA, um, and that was just a phenomenal place to yep. work and yep. incredible people around to learn from. Yep. yep. So and so we we went from that to uh, uh, starting a prototype engineering company. That's where the name Physics Anonymous came from. Uh, where we would do a few contracts, and, and the, the contracts ranged pretty widely too. There, we the first contract we did was uh, f uh, an engineering product uh, product design for some uh, box boxes for motorcycles. Yeah, frame uh, and canister yep. for you know like the BMW. Uh, what do they call them? Adventure bikes. Yeah, like uh, pa like uh, what pannier boxes. I think yeah, yeah. panniers. Yep. Yeah. yeah. How how did you get uh, get that contract? So uh, that was through a friend at work. Uh, he had a friend out in California that, that uh, they did custom seats and stuff for bikes and they wanted to expand. And he said, oh, I know these guys. And uh, we connected through them. Uh, and then that's kind of how most of our contracts work. After that, we, um, 
I did a commercial for a, uh, another bike company, totally independent of this one, strangely, uh, doing um, a, a bike caddy to move your bike around in the garage easier and that type of thing. Uh, and we did a commercial for them. Uh, and that, that was, that was connected through a, my cousin. He happened to know those guys. Were, yeah. He was working on their website and said, you know, look at these guys' YouTube channels, see if that's the sort of thing you want. So the YouTube channel kind of got business that way. Yeah. Well, that's, that's really, really cool. Yeah. Cause I think getting, getting to know people, you know, just starting up is the uh, hardest part. Absolutely. Oh, sure. yeah, I yeah, guess absolutely. One, and the, once you're established, everybody knows, you know, um, <laughs> it's easier to get contracts, but at the beginning for people that start out. Yeah. How do you do it? Like, yeah, do you go from door true. to door, knock it, knocking at people's doors? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Student yeah. engineer. I, mean, we, I guess like, we, we didn't really go out and try to hunt things down like that either. Some of it just kind of showed up for us. Yeah. Uh, you, the YouTube channel did a lot to promote that. And, and yeah. it, you know, it, not necessarily that we advertise ourselves as a prototype engineering company on the YouTube channel, but people see the kind of engineering we do and they kind of ask us, do you do this sort of thing? And, yeah. Can you solve this problem yeah. for us? So, so is that where you see things going, or do you see things going more for channel, or do you see them both I'll, both expanding? Yeah, I'll make no predictions. Yeah. I think that right now it's we're kind of on that fork in the road where the YouTube channel could be the thing. I'd love to just make whatever we want to, of course, and do that. Uh, we could expand yeah. more into the engineering side and build more yeah. more things for people, or we could start building our own products and kind mm -hmm. of get them out there. Nice. I, and I would say in any of these cases, we're not likely to leave YouTube. You know, we, we really yeah. oh, enjoy yeah. the sharing part of it uh, and the conversation we can have with people yeah. uh, and the chance to meet other YouTubers that are doing the same thing. So yeah. Right now, I think it's about, what do you say, 25,000 people interested in whatever yep. random thing we build. Yep. You know, Which is, a, like by the way, a totally bizarre feeling. Yeah, you know, I, I think making for the four of us is not, uh, no. we don't do this for money. Absolutely. We do it because we love doing it. And we need to make money to you know, <laughs> buy <laughs> food. Food or new tools, I, you know. I would be a maker even if I <laughs> yep. couldn't make money with this. Absolutely. You know, this is my yeah, hobby. No doubt. No doubt, the, the, my job. the concept of creation has been ingrained in us. They, yeah. I wouldn't know any other way. You know, I see people that are like tax attorneys for a living, and I just I don't yeah. understand it. It's totally, it doesn't make any sense to me. No, no offense to any tax attorneys out there. You know, yeah. we need you. Well, right? Making a nice spreadsheet is fun on its own. You know, I, <laughs> you are German, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> I, I will. I will say. I enjoy you know, a good spreadsheet. <laughs> when I had a real back when I had a real job, I guess. I, I mean, I guess it's a real job, but um, I remember one of my bosses said, "Jeremy, you're extremely organized." I said, "What? What are you talking about?" <laughs> because you know, my desk is always messy, whatever. But you know, my spreadsheets for my bill of materials and everything—it was always, mm -hmm. I always knew when things were coming, always knew my budget. Yeah. And I guess, yeah, I guess I'd like a good spreadsheet myself. Yeah. Yeah. As a. I, I'm not sure how much you were joking or not, but I, I, I have to have that organized. Or I'm just no. All, all it, joking aside, if I, if I didn't give credit to my father for this one, he's he's a spreadsheet fanatic. You yeah. know, and, this and one engineered things going to the moon on spreadsheets. And, yeah. Uh, I think by the time that he retired, he had such a precise spreadsheet that he, three years ahead of time, knew the exact day that was the best time to retire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just unbelievable organization. Yeah. So, so what did you know. did your dad do at NASA? Uh, he, so when he retired, I believe he was the chief, chief engineer. engineer for the office of chief engineer at Kennedy Space Center. Oh, that sounds uh, very high. Wait, he, was, he was the chief engineer for the office of chief engineer? Yeah. How does that, how does that work? It puts him in, in the big seat at the top of the, the <laughs> chief like engineer. Just below the president? Group, yeah. Yeah, uh, I, well, there, there may I, be know, one person the between center them. director yeah. and you know something else. Yeah. I think but now to understand. I mean, NASA is obviously a, a massive company. I mean, there's there's yeah. you know company, company quote think, in quotes, yeah. yeah. But uh, you know, so there's a, there's probably quite a few people at that level. Right. I think for Kennedy Space Center at the time, there was eight to ten thousand people working out there, uh, and you know, of course, he had been there for forty years, so he was in pretty early on and stayed yeah. in the program. And it, his career bounced all over the place. It, yeah. it started in uh, in in cameras. Um, yeah. Video equipment. Video basically. equipment. So they, they designed a lot of video equipment, uh, you know, from the ground up stuff with with real low response times and high signal to noise mm -hmm. ratios and that type of thing. For NASA. For NASA. Right. Well, yep. That that must have been great when they were setting everything up in the sound stage and stuff, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can promise you. I can show you evidence later. Uh, we went to the moon. That's right. <laughs> wait, wait. You you went to the moon? <laughs> yeah. Your brother? Okay. Was, huh? All right. Humankind went to yeah, went to right. the moon. <laughs> But right. uh, yeah, so uh, he went from that to doing a lot of software development for the launch systems, mm -hmm. um, the, the launch fun. system that, that launched LPS. the shuttle up until, until it was done. He had a huge part in designing mm -hmm. 
uh, the, the later part of his career, he actually went back to video stuff, uh, mm -hmm. designing the systems that, that tracked the shuttle on as, it, as it went up after the last accident. That yeah, was obviously so. a big priority to get really high quality video. So he worked a lot on that stuff too. Oh, sure. Yeah. Actually, I see a bunch of uh, pictures, a bunch of huge pictures on your walls. Is that does that have something to do with this or what, what is that? <laughs> Some of it is, yeah. A few of those photos Ryan took, he worked out at ASA for quite a while. Um, and some some of them aren't just online photos. Like you saw the, the picture of the big, large Hydron Collider um, mm -hmm. right in our living room there. We're just nerds. Yeah, yeah. That's, okay. <laughs> that's, why, that's why we're here, I guess. Yeah, right. absolutely. <laughs> So one project you guys have all obviously done a, a ton on is, is your lathe rebuild project. So can you tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> so the, the lathe project. Like why? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a very good question. We the lathe, did a lathe. <laughs> yeah, the lathe project is a kind of a funny origin because we had been looking for a lathe for a while. We had one of these Harbor Freight mini lathes, and they're they honestly are more of a headache to use than anything. You, they can absolutely make good good parts, but they're just they're not nice to use so you, you end up not using it when you don't want to but the so we were on the market for for a bigger good lathe and i wanted a bit of a fixer upper uh you know something that we could put a, a you know a week's worth of work in and make nice and ryan <laughs> found this one you know spent and you know of course the price for that's going to be pretty high but ryan found this one on craigslist for two hundred dollars and uh, i think it was actually listed for one 150 or 160 mm -hmm. and uh and we went and looked at it, and it, I mean, this was the the worst condition lathe I could have imagined. <laughs> it looked and really bad on the outside. Like, oh, it was, there, for the listeners out there, can you describe how it looked like? That's right. There, there was a lathe under all the rust, <laughs> uh, so, but you had to dig for it. Yeah, so. it had, it had been in a in an open air warehouse in Florida for probably I would say minimum five years without being touched, uh, <laughs> and yeah. so a bird had made a nest inside of it. <laughs> Uh, it's all, you know, it's always it, a telltale sign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Every, every single surface was covered in a thick layer of rust. Mm -hmm. uh, if, you, if you go to our YouTube channel watch the first video, we've got some pretty good footage of, of just what it looked like when we got it. Uh, and they were, like I said, they were asking 160 bucks for it. We had, we had bought, uh, brought some steel wool and some sandpaper with us just to see how bad the rust really was. And sure enough, it moved, you know, the, the ways were not rusty enough to prevent it from moving, and we were able to see there was good steel under it. It hadn't rotted through or anything. And so we said, you know, and it was it was five minutes from our house, you know, and we, neither of us own a truck, so moving a lathe is kind of a, a nightmare. This thing weighs about 800 pounds. And so we told them, I said, okay, we'll buy it. We'll pay you 200 if you deliver it to our house. And they, you know, one guy looked at the other and went, sure. And uh, sure enough, 45 minutes later, it was delivered to our doorstep for 200 bucks. And you, you didn't rent like an engine engine jack and just push it down the street. <laughs> <laughs> so luckily, we had an engine hoist uh, in the garage so we could pull it off the truck with. But oh, nice. uh, yeah, and the adventure began from there, you know. And and even then, I, Ryan and I both really underestimated how much work it needed. I, I was picturing, you know, oh, this this will make a good three part series. Please. I literally said three part series. <laughs> you, so you're at nine here. now. Uh, ooh, even more, I think. Yeah, 12 or something. 12 or 13. I didn't underestimate. I simply lied to my about how much work it would take. <laughs> I believe that. I See, believe that. that. That's a funny thing to me. I used to, at one point, I had a South Bend lathe that I got mm -hmm. for, well, actually, I got given to me, which was awesome. But <clears throat> anyway, it was just so heavy and so big, and I never really put the time into it to restore it that I eventually ended up trading it plus some money for a Harbor Freight lathe. <laughs> you went the other direction. Which, which, you know, works great for my for my purposes. Right. I mean, I just generally I need to turn something that's, you know, half an inch in diameter or whatever else. And, mm -hmm. yep. you know, for a, for a cheap lathe for just, you know, sometimes the cheap stuff isn't so bad. You know, I know, you know, I don't know about you guys, about you guys if you guys know this or not, but internationally, Florida is very much known for our hardware stores and Harbor Freight and stuff. <laughs> isn't that right, mm -hmm. Max? Yes, I went there. I had a great one hour while my sister was shopping at, at a different what place, of course. What do you think of, of Harbor Freight? Yeah. Uh, I thought this would be like absolutely amazing, but I only found this t tiny t tin pan <laughs> with a magnet that you can stick to your <laughs> drill press we have to a keep few nuts those. and bolts. <laughs> I considered buying the set of, uh, it's like toothpick lock, uh, not toothpick, it's like uh, screwdrivers with a little um, pick at the end. Sure, yep. Mm -hmm. For O-rings, I considered buying it, but then I thought, nah, it's a waste of money. And it yeah. was just a dollar or so. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Har Harbor Freight's kind um, of a funny thing. You know, it, it, 
to get people into a hobby, it's it's fantastic because mm -hmm. you really can't beat their prices. Unfortunately, yeah. it drives a lot of people out of the hobby too because their <laughs> their tool breaks in week one. Yeah. You know, so I think yeah. there's some good buys there still. There are, you know? yeah. There's some and, things that it doesn't yeah. matter the quality as much yep. on. So yep. and well, there, there's an amazing amount of products. I, I was that, a little that, bit harsh with my comments. I I like the big tools. I think there's definitely yeah. something there, but obviously I couldn't take it home, so I could only take the small items, and mm -hmm. I think they're generally more cheaper. Yeah. Right. You know, no, no a drill set from Have Afraid, is that good? Uh, I thought it wouldn't be. You know, we, we, we lived on the drill set from Harbor Freight for quite a while. Uh, yeah. And yeah, I've got one too. Yeah. I, I would say after now using, uh, you know, higher quality drills, and I'm using like Chicago Latrobe and Clean Line and stuff like that, the difference is yeah. enough to be worth a hundred dollars set of drills. A surprising amount of difference. That, yeah. that being yeah. said, I mean, that's not an option for a lot of people. It certainly wasn't right. when we started. Um, you buy a drill doctor, you know, and yeah, sharpen your drill bits. Yeah. yeah, one of the big problems with them isn't the steel; it's that they're the machining on them to create the drill to start with is so bad. Yeah. And if you go yeah. and cut a new tip, it, it a lot of them will work just fine. Yep. Hmm. Yep. And you know, there's a Especially there's a number if you're cutting aluminium anyway. Absolutely. Oh yeah. 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 And there, there's a number steel, of Harbor Freight stuff. tools that just require some amount of modification to make good. You know, we've yeah. we've seen that quite a bit too, where. You, They'd be almost junk to use to start with, but you know, <laughs> you're, if you're a maker, yeah. you know, your your tools are just like any other project. You, you can you know modify it, make it better. Yeah, I'd be but, curious. For yeah, us to go you can't back just to buy that. a tool and expect to use it. Yeah, <laughs> apart from cordless drills, but like any bigger machinery, like a table yeah. or anything like that, they all need adjustment. Yep. Now, now that that actually just, brings us to a good good point. I mean, what what is the brand of what what tools do you guys like? I mean, specifically the brands is what we need to know here for this <laughs> podcast. Mike, do you want to go first? You have a different set than I do for sure. Oh gosh, uh, but Mike oh, and I differ rivalry. on this a lot because Mike, the way that he uses tools is in a very functional way, and so he needs a lot of stuff that you can use and break a few times and not yeah. not sink a lot of money into. I'm de I'm definitely so. rough on my equipment. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. So and, and I like power tools. You know, the less physical oh, yeah. work I have to do, the better. Ryan is the exact yeah. opposite. Yeah, we joke that we, you know, we'll both be watching a woodworking channel, but Mike's will be, you know, how to build this new jig for the table saw, and I'm watching a guy in his overalls with a, you know, hand plane that he got 200 years ago <laughs> with the family, restored it recently, and is now making a chair. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I guess you do have a lot of Harbor Freight tools and stuff. Yeah, right? huge amount of Harbor Freight tools, no doubt about it. I, and yeah, you know, initially it started the fact that we were poor college students. That, you know, mm. there wasn't any, if we you wanted to get that sort of equipment, there was no other option. Now we're starting to get in a little bit better stuff, but I, I still buy a lot of the, the Chinese, like our, even our bandsaw, I think is... I think, is it a Jet or... I it's not a Jet. Boy, it, you know, it's one of the American brands, but it's one of the cheaper ones. Okay. Um, like you, you know, with bandsaws, I've never seen more than one design of a bandsaw. It's always <laughs> yeah, the same. Everybody slaps their logo on it. <laughs> that's true. Even the German manufacturers do it. Really? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for me, uh, I, I like... Uh, you know, I guess a lot of the higher end stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I said... Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Metrology tools are amazing. Yes, yeah. The, you know, the capability that they buy is pretty amazing. And you know, I, I remember now um, one of the one of the videos that made our YouTube channel uh, kind of blow up was this tool organization video where we laser cut some foam to, to organize the tools. And I got an amazing amount of comments, pe people telling me they wouldn't watch me because I bought cheap tools. <laughs> and you know, the, the, I'm talking like what? like uh, you know a socket set. The, you know, and oh, suck it! Say you don't need to spend money on no, that. No, yeah, there's no reason to. If you're, if you're, you know, if you're a mechanic that works on cars all day long and you beat beat the crap out of them, yes, it probably makes sense to, to get a higher quality that's going to last you longer, like Snap On or something. Yeah. But for for 99 percent of the people that use them, that the kind of application you would never need to spend money on them. So yeah. I I bought the cheapest set I could. Yeah. I think I paid 80 dollars yeah. for the whole set. You know, honestly, so. even working in a car shop, and I did for a little while going to college. Uh, the Snap-on guy showed up. We bought a lot of that stuff. I still had a lot of cheap tools and stuff. And for wrenches and sockets and things like that, with a handful of exceptions, they really don't matter. You know, the the tolerance is about the same. You'll break them every now and then. Yeah. You'll have to drill holes in them to, you know, fold a cheater bar to it or whatever you need to do. You might as well do it with a, you know, $5 <laughs> tool instead of a $50 tool. That's true. And, yeah, you know, the... I, 
the late series brought in a whole new crowd for us. You know, the whole first season of Physics Anonymous, we built enough random stuff. People didn't feel like they had an expertise over it. So we didn't get a lot of negative comments. People were just, you know, they enjoyed watching it and, you know, whatever project we built. But since we started doing the lathe, we've attracted a lot of machinists, um, you, you know, who made their careers on it. And they see these two, you know, amateurs, for lack of a better word, doing things wrong. And, and although I will absolutely agree with them that we're doing it wrong, I think they're probably doing a bigger disservice to, to the machinist world by excluding people uh, because they're not experts. You know, the, I, there, there's a huge intimidation factor when it comes to doing this stuff because everyone's used to doing it exactly right. And, yeah. and there's, a, there's a lot more wiggle room there. there you know, I mean, p people, I think they can, they can get into the hobby and make a lot of mistakes and still make really good stuff. Yeah. I know, so one of the, one of the things yeah. we try and do on that channel is show those mistakes um, and, and not be discouraged by it. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, everybody, <clears throat> everybody learns from somewhere, and I think it's just, I don't know, it's easy to say, oh, this guy made this awesome thing, but, you know, they don't see the 10 years that went into his experience to make it or, or, the, or the 10 times he had to make it before it became, you know, looked awesome. Yeah, and yeah. it's I, frustrating, too, making a video because you try to make it look good. I mean, I, <laughs> you know, I don't know how much money that if you show all, all your mistakes, I'm certain, I'm certain you don't. We, I mean, we if, definitely don't. You know? <laughs> We try to show the entertaining ones as something we learn from, yeah. you know, things yeah. like that. But yeah. I don't know. I think that brings up a good point where we, you know, when we first started the YouTube channel, we were not even good at making videos, I don't think. Uh, I don't know that we are now either. But, <laughs> uh, I, I watched your first episode today again, and I think it was pretty okay. good, especially for the well, first thanks. one. You had all the branding yeah, and all of well, this, you know? You had a microphone. <laughs> that, you had a is microphone. A, that is a huge step up in, in most first yeah. YouTube channel uh, videos. But I think as but, far as like telling a story and things like that, I mean, there's no other way to do it than to go out there and just start making the things. You yeah. know, let fail as yeah. often and as quickly as you can and move on. And... Uh, Start yeah, right now. Absolutely. Yeah, and you know, a lot of people ask us, you know, what, what, what do you think we need to do to start a YouTube channel? Like, what equipment do we need? All that stuff. And my advice to them is always just, just start. Yeah. You know, we we went into it with that with that feeling of, you know, it it, it can't be perfect. You know, every yeah. we we have so much to learn in this process that if I if I do that, I'm going to upload a video in a year and a half from now. If you if and, you're never willing to go out there and put out stuff that you know somebody's going to correct you for, that you're going to make a mistake on, stuff's not going to be right. Things are going to be not perfect. If you don't accept that, you're never going to produce anything. Yeah. So. And our, yeah. our I, but there's a trick to make it easier. Like nobody knows that I'm Max right. Maker. <laughs> nobody. Yeah, that's true. Although in one, of, in one of your videos, you can just barely see you. You're in the frame for just a little bit. I noticed in your last one. Yeah, I I don't mind anymore. Yeah. Oh, so now now you're not. Ashamed. I noticed afterwards, and I said, I don't mind. So now anymore. you're not ashamed of your work. You think it's up to par finally. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's okay. It, it's it's just interesting though because, you know, I look at my videos and you guys too. I'm sure and Max I certainly, mm -hmm. you know, it's just. You see the stuff you make today, and whatever level you're on, hopefully you see the stuff you see a year ago, and it's like, that was really, really bad. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah absolutely. You know, and that's, 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 the, yeah, that's right you know, hopefully that's just you saying that to yourself, and hopefully not everybody else, but it's, it's just interesting how, how your perspective changes and your knowledge changes just about making videos, and you know, hopefully about making this stuff yourself. Mm -hmm. and, I guess honestly, I feel like my video making skills have improved way faster than my actual making stuff skills have improved. I don't know about, I don't know about you guys. Yeah, I think it's for us. I think it's kind of equal on on both. Uh, we both had had I had a, a pretty good background in video production before this. So, okay. uh, but but how to tell a story on YouTube, especially in the genre we're in, that's grown significantly right. since we started. Yeah, yeah. Because you're a multimedia engineer, right? That's right. Yep. Yeah. I think I'm still struggling with the video production side of it. You know, Mike is, is way out in front on that. And I, you know, I'm somebody, I just want to go out into the garage, turn on some music and make something. Yeah. And, you know, to get but the video it's learning by doing. and everything. It is. Yep. It's learning by doing. If Mike is all doing all the editing, obviously you, you won't get to practice. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll let that Just because he's better anyway. at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I, I agree. Usually the, usually the person that's better at the editing, you know, whether it be a podcast or a video is... Probably should keep doing it. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I got into CAD. I, I bought a 3D printer while I was at uh, university. Mm. It was in 2012, pretty early on. Um, yeah. You know, there weren't that many cheap 3D printers out there yet. 
And because I had one, I had to actually use CAD to make something, to print. Um, and I got all the practice. And all the pre other people at university, at my class, you know, they didn't get the practice. And at the end, I was kind of pro at CAD, not pro, but you know, mm -hmm. it was easy for me to do stuff where others would struggle just because mm -hmm. I had to practice. Yep. Yeah, yep. yeah. Uh, both Ryan and I had done a lot of 3D modeling before the 3D printing took off, uh, you know, for art and movies and that type of thing. And uh, yeah, before 3D printers came out, Ryan and I had a good background in, uh, in animation and modeling and that type of thing, which gave us a huge heads up, he uh, head up when, when it came to 3D printing when that came out. We were still using art programs to design stuff and not engineering programs, so that was a bit of a switch. But, you know, I, I think we were wired a little bit to, to design in 3D already. That helps quite a bit. Right. Do you print a lot of parts for your lathe? Uh, not for the lathe. Uh, we the whole first season. I don't think there's a single episode where we didn't 3D print half the parts. So we used it extensively. Um, the the lathe really requires stronger parts than that. So mm -hmm. there will be some 3D printing. Uh, I know that. Where there's a few like like the way wipers and stuff like that. We may mm -hmm. 3D print or laser cut and that type of thing. But did you do any 3D yeah. printing for this last episode? Uh, no, I don't mm -hmm. think we did. No. Yeah. Okay. Right. It's interesting. The background I came from, you know, engineering, I still don't own a 3D printer, you know, mm -hmm. even though I know how to, I don't know how to model things in 3D because that's what I did, but it was just, you know, my background is machining. And, mm -hmm. you know, for that matter, you know, I, I think the first time I heard of a wood router was with a 3D or with a uh, CNC router. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, so this is like a milling machine. I, I just, you know, I just came from it from a totally different perspective. And yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know, I guess... I guess everybody comes at, to things from their own Yeah, I think that's actually, I, yeah. mine started out uh, somewhere back when I was, I don't know, just starting to go to college. I had seen a CNC machine for the first time, and I thought, man, I've got to get one of those. And I went out and looked, you know, on the internet, and it was like $35,000 <laughs> for the, the cheapest, cheapest one. one at that point. I was like, okay, you know, yeah. maybe I, you know, can't do this or whatever. And I thought about it for a while and thought, well, I bet I could build one which was a stupid thing in hindsight. Uh, but I figured if I could get a motor to turn, you know, from a computer that I could make it work. And, you know, again, in hindsight, the mechanics of it turned out to be much more difficult than that, but it got me started anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ryan had built the, f the first quote unquote CNC machine that we had made was from uh, just regular printer parts. Yeah, old dot matrix printers. Yep. And oh, we, nice. we made something. That's a bad way to start. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, you know, back back it's then, a good way to start. But, it's great. Yeah. It's great for starting. Yeah, but, that's right. Yeah. No, and I, at mean, the, I, I yeah. can mill wax molds. I think it, yep. it's and, it's uh, an affordable folks. way to start. That's right, yeah. And you know, at the time, there wasn't uh, there there wasn't stepper controllers like there are now. You know, yeah. there was only the pro stuff yeah. that was ten thousand dollars a piece. Yeah. So, so I had to, had to learn yeah. electronics to yeah, build your own stepper yeah, controller. Own stepper controller. And, and we, we worked up from there. All, and we, we ended up with a CNC machine that could cut aluminum, but my goodness is it it is a harder problem to solve than yeah. uh, than it sounds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for those that don't know, like if, if you touch the, the router bit and it flexes just a tiny bit, mm -hmm. then your CNC is, is not very yeah, good. Yeah. Yep. Now, Max, you just got a new Z-axis on your CNC, right? You, you built your own. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. And I cheaped out on the Z-axis before, and now I made it super sturdy, um, all with really hefty slides and lots of aluminium, lots of um, braces mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to keep everything really sturdy. So nice. it works like a charm now. It, it worked great before, but now it's super solid. That's great. Now I just need a bigger motor. I'm still running on a small, like a router-type motor. Mm -hmm. And I want to go up to a water cool one from China. Mm -hmm. We call it the China Spindle here in Germany. Mm -hmm. I think that's about what we're running on. It's the yep. I think we got it from Little Machine. The water cooled shop, one. I think ours is the not water cooled one, but ah, it's okay. hard enough that it should be. And so we have copper pipe wrapped around it that we do run our coolant through, and that keeps it down. <laughs> cool the motor. Yeah, that that motor's from the uh, the Harbor Freight Mini Mill. That's where that comes is from. That it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, but we're, we're, we're right now we're in the process of planning on uh, for a, a much larger substantial CNC. In fact, if you've been watching our channel, the the mini grinder we're making is kind of in some yeah. ways the prototype for for that machine. Mm -hmm. So, but that is pretty hefty, you know. If you compare it to one of these small aluminum uh, CNCs, which can work great, it just takes much longer to cut something. Yeah, yeah. yeah we we basically want to make the equivalent of. Uh, a full-size mill uh, that is CNC controlled. Yeah. So. Nice. Oh, 
That's really good. That, that'll, that'll be that an entire season by itself, I think. <laughs> I don't know if we'll get there, but it's, <laughs> that's the goal. I often see um, on eBay um, offers for used industrial robots, Ooh. like free access robots. Ooh. And I always think, man, I could buy one for like 500 bucks. How am I going to get this running? <laughs> Is there any way of getting this running at all? Do, do you mean like a six axis robot or you mean, a, what do you mean a three? Six oh, axis, six, okay. of, of course, six axis. Yeah, it's like more than your arm can do. You can get that for $500 on eBay, huh? Yeah, but from 1995. It, that doesn't matter. Sounds pretty neat. If the, you know, the hard the hard part in that solution is really the the mechanics of it. So if it's if it's stiff enough, that's true. I mean, in that case, it's going to be some older uh, spindle monitoring stuff. You know, I don't know if they'll have some servo kind of driven. Pro- yeah, well, it'll probably be servo driven, and the encoders on it. Well, they might be. Oh, what's the word? They're not encoders, but they're another kind of uh, absolute positioning system that they use for a hmm. lot of those. And getting a software to work with that could be a pain. You'd, but, you'd have to be willing to write your own, I yeah. believe. Uh, but that's the yeah, thing. Or you could slap another, you know, more modern encoder on the back of it for another, you know, fifty bucks or something like that, and get most of the functionality out without yeah. having to. You know, if I could could get the electronics done, mm-hmm. and the, the the software to run it, that would yeah. be great. But I just don't have this. I mean, to uh, I, I probably could do it, but it would take me so many years. Come on, come on, Max. You know that's your next. To figure that's it all out. That's gotta be your next YouTube project. <laughs> we're all we're all looking forward to it. No, now. I'm, I'm not into this thing. No, no. <laughs> if 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 I buy tools, I just want them to work. <laughs> that's all I want. Oh. I don't want to just set up. <laughs> that's why I admire you guys, like grinding the ways. Yeah. That's a- For those who are listening, the ways are the thing that the lathe runs on. Basically, it's like rails. Yeah. And they need to be absolutely straight and even, and, and you're yeah, grinding them. Because yeah. ours are not right now. They're yeah, well worn. Yeah, the, the whole the whole machine is twisted. There's a whole complicated set of reasons. And you know, we, I think that was the biggest point of controversy we've ever had on YouTube. People, people thought we were crazy for doing it, and they're probably right. But uh, we're gonna do it anyway. <laughs> well, if, if it makes good content, you know, yeah. it's enjoyable absolutely. to watch. Oh, we still want a working lathe. What, what exactly are you planning with this grinder? So the the small grinder we have now is is going to be a standalone benchtop grinder that we'll use for a number of projects. But it's it's a it's a learning experience to make the larger CNC mill, which will start its life as a grinder for the for the lathe. Mm-hmm. So it, it'll instead of having a spindle on top like a CNC machine will, it'll have a, a grinding head, and the entire bed will sit on top of it, and we're going to grind it that way. So. So you're gonna turn the lathe upside down? Yep, it'll be it'll be right side up. It'll just mount. You can imagine a, a full size mill with a with a really large bed, um, uh, and the, the lathe will actually bolt to that. Wow, that sounds like okay. quite a project. It's gonna be huge, yeah. And yeah. It, it, we have we have no idea if we're gonna get there. <laughs> to be honest with you, but you, but you guys have a three car garage, so obviously you've got all the space <laughs> in the world. <laughs> yeah. Of course, I see four cars outside too, so I guess, <laughs> yeah. I guess you don't have space for the so cars. That, that garage is full right now, so. Yeah. You know, and we're very lucky to have the space we do. But I know a lot of people, you know, sp- space unless you've got a you know, a ten thousand square foot warehouse. You're gonna have space limitations. Yeah, it, that's just how it is. And so. yeah. there are many makers out there with tiny workshops, and they all do amazing stuff. Yep. Not an excuse. That first CNC that I built, Agreed. I did in a small apartment, which I'm sure my neighbors really enjoyed. <laughs> uh, but you know, it was the space that I had. So. Well, now, now you guys have. I saw on your channel, somebody loved a comment. They said something like, "Why don't you guys have more subscribers?" And I, I see you guys have twenty-five thousand, which, which to me seems pretty good. Now, as far as uh, the business goes, are you guys making money at this, or how does how does that work exactly? What's what's your? So I guess you have a plan, or I'll address the first part about the twenty five thousand subscribers. Uh, we're it's uh, honestly incomprehensible to us that twenty five thousand people want to watch us every week. It, mm-hmm. it, we're we're extremely grateful for for the audience that we have. Uh, and not really sure how it happened. You know, we we went in kind of just assuming this is going to be a hobby forever and and something we enjoy sharing with people and starting a conversation with people. Now you say that, but you know, how many subscribers do you think you have to have before you can start treating your fans badly? <laughs> For us, I think that was Maybe about a hundred. Hundred, yeah, about hundred. Okay. <laughs> 
the, all kidding aside, we we like you know we to go back to the the you know, the comment discussion we had earlier. We have I, I think a playful dialogue with our with our yeah. subscribers. We like to poke fun at them just as much as they like to poke fun at us, and uh, you know. I, I, there's a lot of criticism. You're always going to get nasty people in the comments section. You know, as soon as we went over about a thousand subscribers, you'd be amazed at what what kind of comments you get. You yeah, just get good at ignoring them. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. No, I, it was pretty funny. You know, I'm, I'm at about that thousand subscriber level, and I remember I put out a video that I was extremely proud of, and you know, I got some good comments, and then somebody says, "Someone, like, oh, this is so terribly engineered. You should have thought of this and that." <laughs> and uh, I thought it was pretty funny to be honest. I took it as kind of a compliment, yeah, but um, yeah. I remember yeah. one of my one of my family members. I won't mention who exactly, but um, that person says, "You know, things are going so good for you. Is this really true?" And I'm like, "Well, you know, people <laughs> people say bad things and nice things. It's not like I, I thought it was kind of you know. I finally reached that point. I've I've arrived in the world when people yeah. troll my channel. Yeah, I think the majority of them are really well intentioned. You know, yeah, I, just... I I try and split them into two categories. Uh, are some they, some are, are clearly idiots though. Well, for, well, sure. for sure. <laughs> well, you know, I, I look at it like, are they? Do they want me to succeed, or do they want me to fail? And if they want me to succeed, uh, I I try and listen to them the best I can. Now, yeah. you know, some sometimes we have a different philosophy in life as far as how we approach problems, and that's just fine. You know, mm -hmm. I can I can respect them and ignore their comment at the same time. Yeah. But you're absolutely right. There are there are trolls, they're idiots, but you, you, yeah. I, not our viewers. Our viewers part are part of the game. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but, but some, sometimes I I got to give some. A little bit of credit. Sometimes you'll have an idea that's, you know, you haven't thought of. I mean, in that oh, same project. Of course, that's not I the was, idiots, though. I was having, you know, it's like it was a strand piece, and the guy says, "That doesn't look quite right." And then I realized I've made it based on, not based on my prototype, but based on something that I don't know where I came up with this. So I was like, "Oh, that's awesome! Now I can yep. fix it." So. But that's yep. exactly you know. what we want in the comments. Yeah, I mean, that's Absolutely. part of the uh, part of the magic of YouTube is to actually get that now. You know, when we started the Lathe project, our audience changed quite a bit. You know, most of our, our channel uh, has grown through the Lathe project. So we have a lot of machinists. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we joke that if you have four machinists in a room and you ask for their opinion, you'll get five. Yeah. So because <laughs> somebody's true. got two opinions. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, you and know, I'll never do a painting video like automotive painting for the same reason. They're the only group that I know of that's more opinionated than. Uh, than yeah, because you clearly did it wrong. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You're gonna yeah. plastic dip your car, right? Isn't that the thing you do? <laughs> Mike, we'll do that to your car. Sounds Mine's good. Mine's yeah. as it is. Sounds good. <laughs> but to go back, to go back to your original question as far as making money on YouTube, uh, you, you certainly can, and and we we make enough money to sustain the YouTube channel right now. As it's, far as buying parts. So. Yeah, but it's de it's definitely not enough to live off of. We're not yeah. we're not quitting our jobs just yet, but uh, you know. It's not, people think that you post 10 videos and you become famous and you quit your job and everything's good, but it nope. takes a huge, huge amount of work. Yeah. Yeah. And we're doing this for the people, you know? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, and that's, I remember when we first started, you know, we probably got that first 30 to 50 subscribers or something. And of course, that's all your friends and family and stuff like that. Uh, you know, that's probably double my friends and family, I think. But um, the, from there, we got, I don't know, maybe a hundred or something, and it, like Mike said, it seemed to stall out, and it was really, it's, really disheartening. You know, yeah. we we thought maybe we should quit. But you know, there's there's a couple of ways to look at it. You know, when you've got thirty people, that's that's a classroom. If you've got, you know, a hundred, two hundred, something like that, that's like a lecture hall that you can go and speak to. Uh, when you get to a yeah. thousand and five thousand things like that, that's just incomprehensible to me in terms of how many people are actually listening to you and want yep. to. Yeah. to see what you're doing and yeah, it, every comment counts absolutely every single one like yeah. sometimes i wake up and i have a bad morning and then i check my comments and somebody said oh great video love it yeah. and it i'm keeps like you oh, going. that made my morning for sure yeah. or they say sure. terrible video and then you just slink off to work right last week i had a guy uh, he wanted to argue with me i i posted uh, somebody built a mitus uh, saw a station and you know mitus saw it's not supported on the left and the right side so if you have long stock it hangs over, it will drop off once you do the cut. Mm -hmm. So in these mitos table, uh, mitos saw stations, you always need to have a little uh, lower section where you drop the saw into, so it's flush with the rest of the surface. Uh -huh. And I said, sh wouldn't it be great to have a mitos saw that wouldn't have the base underneath, that just had the base at the back, like a radial arm saw. Hmm. So you could just and this guy, it you see, table, you just bolt it to any table, yeah. exactly, like a radial arm saw. And, and this guy, wanted to argue with me that screws wouldn't be able to hold up. 
Like if you, like uh, it, it's a, it, it's given that if you screw anything down that has a saw on it with screws into wood, the screws won't hold up. <laughs> huh. I, yeah, go, I, mean, go, even, I mean, who says you have to use screws? I mean, there, there's a million ways to yeah. approach any problem. Go it's, watch, go watch Matthias's uh, YouTube channel, who builds all his own t uh, yeah. table saws and, and band saws, and every single one of those is held together with glue and wood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he told me I lack experience. He said, "Go get some experience." <laughs> well, you know, sometimes there's helpful comments, Max. Yeah. You just need to, need to listen. <laughs> yes, and, and you know, because because you can just go out and get experience. It doesn't come from you know time. You just oh, you know, I'll go out into the store, Harbor Freight, and get some experience yeah, here. Just, just that'll something. that'll work out nicely. Yeah. They want you know, it's amazing yeah. how many people want you to quit immediately and get experience at yeah. the same time. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I would say for, for anybody out there that, that is thinking about starting a YouTube channel or struggling starting a YouTube channel, go look at some of the people you find successful and see how many videos they've uploaded. And that'll give you an idea of how long it takes to, to get into this. You know, there's, there's a few success stories out there that have a dozen videos and, and uh, you know, 10, 000, 100,000 subscribers, but those are really rare. Yeah. Most everybody else has, you know, 50 to 100 videos. They've been doing it for two years. So if you're at that point and you haven't gone anywhere, maybe consider what your content is. But it just, it always takes work. It always takes time. Yeah. It's a funny... But, you know, just do it. Yep. Yeah, do, yeah, don't, yeah. Don't, don't try and make it perfect. Don't sit there and wonder, you know, should I do it, should I not do it? Just go for it. It's a funny thing, too, go because I feel like, you know, as you do it with anything like this, it's like, well, what what's constitutes success? I'm sure that, you know... To, to me, you guys look successful on your channel, but to you, you probably think, well, I need yep. to be more like, yeah, I don't know, I, I can't think of somebody who's... <laughs> yeah, we, you know, we, we want to cross between uh, This Old Tony, if you haven't seen him, mm. and... Yeah. Maybe Bad Obsession. Bad Obsession, Motorsports, the, the, the Project Binky. Yeah. And I'm sure a lot of the, our viewers know about that. You know, we want to we want to strike. A, it, there's always, yeah. there's always, it doesn't matter how many subscribers you have. You're looking at the next level. Yeah. Of the we next really guy. probably have 100 people that we, we watch on a regular basis and love. It, it's, yeah. 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 I don't know if you've got them all in your channel list or not, but. I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah, we we there's some of them are, but, yeah. but we'll, we'll make some recommendations on yeah. there. But, uh. Some of the ones that we really enjoy too, I don't think are are terribly broad audience or uh, they're very specific, yeah. you know, but phenomenal content yeah. like uh, well, Stefan Kossespin. I was gonna say Stefan, he's another, he's another. Is he German? He's German, right? Yeah, yeah. Stefan Goodeswinner. Yeah. and he he German we admire him tremendously. He's like the stuff that he does is is fantastic, and he yeah. you know he's got he's got some patience and precision that I don't think our channel ever gets to. Yeah. I I always comment on his videos. No, that's great. I always say it's called surface. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, and and he's got. For those that don't know him, he says surface, surface, yeah. surface. which I always <laughs> always cracks me up. <laughs> but he's a great he machinist. Really yeah. kind, of, kind of like a, a aluminum. How, how do you say that, Max? <laughs> Aluminium, <laughs> like it's spelled. <laughs> yeah, like it's spelled. Yeah, the right, the right oh, way. Okay. Well, you, you know, know, I guess I guess if you're learning English. Wait, wait. You guys know it's actually the right way, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You write we, aluminium, we right? I mean, <laughs> I mean, maybe that's you. You spell it. I spell it my own way. I'm, I'm a professional writer, you know. So. I'm yeah. Like, okay. Uh, it's true. And I'm dyslexic, you yeah. know. So. Oh, another dyslexic. Hey, all right. I think it's three of us. I think it's three, Jeremy. <laughs> I was gonna say we're dyslexic. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, right. Yeah. You know, being dyslexic at school, I was really worried because I knew at one time um, I'm really going to have problems with school because I got to get bad grades and all of this. Mm -hmm. Didn't happen. Well, well, that's yeah. lucky. That is lucky. I, I suffered it's pretty pretty heavy dyslexia when I was a kid as far as reading. Terrible reader. Yeah, but we're all engineers exactly. now, you know. It yeah. wasn't wasn't a problem in life, that's for sure. It was, it was yeah. It was uh, I mean. intimidating, you know, especially, I didn't know I was dyslexic until my last year of high school. Mm. And so I thought there, I thought I was just dumb, to be honest. You know, I, I thought there was something wrong with me. I, I wasn't a good reader. I wasn't a good writer. Oh, wow. And uh, I, I remember my first year of college, I had, you know, I was terrified to read out loud in class, you know, because dyslexia, it's just, you stumble on, especially when you get nervous, it makes it worse. And I was in uh, my printmaking studio and my... Uh, 
my printmaking professor was dyslexic and he started by reading the syllabus and he said I'm dyslexic I should probably have somebody else read this but I'm just going to read it anyway and I kind of like that changed my whole attitude on it it's like I need to stop using this as an excuse you know and I need to just get over it yeah, yeah. What's, now, do you guys use a script for your YouTube videos, or do you just wing it? <laughs> Almost never a script. There are, really? Yeah, That's there are, impressive. There are some cases where we will sit and plan wow. out how we want the story to go. Mm-hmm. In, in you know, most cases, what we want to say. In yeah, cases I'll, I'll stuff, have an idea but... of where I want to finish the video. Yeah. When it, you know, especially in a multi-part series, I don't. I want to get to some sort of conclusion so we have a complete story. Mm. But the storytelling really happens in the editing. And okay. there are there are cases where I'll get halfway through editing and say I'm missing this piece and I'll go and record it. Yeah. It's there are other times where we just kind of riff on things and see if mm-hmm. you know we come up with something good. It'll just be the twenty takes you don't see, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so it does take more than one take. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> like, because like me, you, I, I, on average, I take hundred fifty <laughs> takes. Per sure. Year. I, I mean, wow. seriously, oh, one hundred fifty. Literally, literally one hundred fifty. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Because it says I, I use Final Cut uh, Pro, and for every take, it puts an, another number at the end. Wow. So at the end, like on my outro, I'm on number 100, I'm 150 oh, on patient. average. That's great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, personally, you'll probably hear it in this podcast, but if I don't have a script, I'm going to say, you know, and then, um, mm-hmm. it's like, it's like a crutch and it hopefully, hopefully doesn't come off, off to other people as much as it does me when I listen to myself. Um, but, you know, you, you know, I think you're right. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I just said, you know, I said it again. <laughs> and you said it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just a heads up, Jeremy. I, I take out all the pauses. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I that's do so good. many cuts. That's, yeah, that's good. good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, ed- editing is a magical thing for sure. And there are some cases where we want to we want to show that it's not a seamless proce- process. We did an entire video on how how many mistakes we've made in the past. That's still my favorite video. Yeah. It's something I've never seen somebody else do on YouTube to just go back and visit all their products projects and say. This is where I messed up. This is how it worked out, you know, after using it for a month, all this stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, I love cool it. Idea. I don't think we got a lot of traction on it, but. <laughs> I, I enjoyed that. I saw that one. I enjoyed it. Oh, good. Thank so you. So I see, I see you messed up that, um, the tool holder. Um, I, actually, I, I don't remember most of your other mistakes. So, you know, I, I still think highly of you yeah. guys. That's <laughs> cool. We'll, we'll see how this day goes. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. We, we do have a bit of a mission statement on our, on our YouTube to, to kind of stay humble and, uh, you see a lot of these guys out there that it's easy p- to project perfection on YouTube. If you really wanted to, to go through the trouble yeah. uh, to the make everything look life. perfect. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I do, I think. But, you know, we, don't, we, we try not to do that. I mean, in some cases, you just do for, for, for storytelling, you know, mm-hmm. to make sure that, that you have a conclusion to your project or whatever. But it's, it's fun to go back and look and say, like, okay, this, this looks great on camera because I did it. I, you know, I took 15 videos of it not working and one that did. Uh, and I showed you that, but it, it's also fun to, to show people what it's really like to to build things and because we you know you can you can by accident you know we want to inspire makers on our channel and you can discourage them by showing only successes because the you know you're gonna have tons of failures in in your yeah. in your projects and if you don't show that people are, are gonna think there's something wrong yeah. with them and they're they're doing it wrong mm-hmm. but that's just part of the making process. What, what I often do is whenever I um, take the screwdriver and insert the bit into the screw. I cut it as if I was going to hit the screw at the first try, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the bit just comes down, hits the hole straight away, drives it down, done. <laughs> nice. Well, it's a reality that normally three or four attempts to hit it. You should, you should do a super cut of every, every uh, cut that you did where it went wrong. You know, yeah. there you go. It'll be like a bad infomercial. You know, oh, yeah. this guy can't, you know, put in one screw correctly. Yeah, <laughs> there's this great compil- compilation of the struggle in infomercials yep. where people just mess up. Yep. <laughs> like she tries to crack an egg and it lands on the floor. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. We're, right now, we're working on a bit of a trailer for for our show that is kind of a supercut of all of the episodes before, and I'm making sure to include every ridiculous part that you know may isn't isn't the, the most mistakes, flattering you know stuff that didn't go right yes. <laughs> yeah. things that caught on fire when they shouldn't our, have our goofiest yeah. moments our worst yeah. acting all oh, of yeah. that stuff but i like how you said when they shouldn't have when they shouldn't have <laughs> <laughs> we have to specify uh, next episode's got some things setting on fire yes so, yeah, yeah that sometimes it's intentional yeah, yeah. We're working, did it happen yet uh we're, we're working on a um a Halloween episode at the moment where there'll be some intentional explosions and fire. Yeah. And okay. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, that's quite a quite a trailer. That sounds like sounds <laughs> like fun. Yeah. 
Well, if you're not having fun during, you know, making YouTube videos, you're doing something wrong. Yeah, you're probably not making money doing it, so you better be having fun. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah. That's yeah. very true. And it is fun. From the first episode. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yep. A little intimidating the first it, time. It could, it definitely, you hit that upload button and and you get a pit in the, you know, in your stomach and it, yeah. it gets yeah. it gets a little nerve wracking. But both Ryan and but I hitting the upload button isn't the end of it. Oh, absolutely. That's not. where where the other work starts. Well, yeah, exactly, and that and that's really I find making the videos the the the, the least stressful part of of the process. You know, the, the stressful part is after and and you know looking for for good comments and that type of thing you don't live off the comments you don't you know i'm not gonna quit my youtube channel because somebody told me that i look stupid and i make bad videos <laughs> yeah. bad haircut I think I <laughs> yeah. but yeah. uh but there you know you read an, if you read enough comments if enough of the comments are telling you you're doing something wrong may, maybe you're doing something wrong so there's all there's always that consideration mm -hmm. um but we get a lot of encouragement we get a lot of positive comments yeah. too Oh, at the beginning, I always asked, like, do you have any feedback? I still do sometimes because mm -hmm. I really want to know. I just want to, I don't want to comment just saying, like, great video as always. <laughs> then, <laughs> right. It doesn't help you much, right? You'd like to have to be the honest Which answer. I, I didn't get much, but I read a lot of <coughs> other people's yeah. videos. <laughs> no, that's a great comment. I mean, you know, I, just with some, some of my videos, I, I feel like things have prog progressed quite a bit. And a lot of that is because I asked, you know, there's a couple of people that I ask, you know, what do I need to do better here? what's bad, whatever. And then look, they'll give me actual feedback of you did this bad, you did this good. And it's really, really helpful. I mean, I, mean, I kind of hate it when people say, oh, well, that's a pretty good video. I mean, I don't hate it, mm -hmm. but it's not very useful either. Yeah. Yeah. And it's good to have a, you know, some people that are going to give you honest feedback no matter what. You know, my, my girlfriend watches almost all of the videos that I make. She's not interested in machining in any way. Almost anything I do in the garage, she's not interested in. But hmm. it, my, you know, my kind of guiding light is if she's entertained by it, I'm doing something right. So, and she gives me great feedback, you know, and, and she doesn't hold back for sure. If the, you know, so it's, it's a good, good to have that criticism. You need that critique to keep moving forward. But was she the one helping out when you spray painted the lathe? Yep. Yep. Yeah. She, uh, she, she does, we, we get her in the garage every once in a while and helping out. She's happy to do it for sure. Oh, that's good. Very cool. My, my last video, I, I showed it to my son and he's three years old and he was getting kind of bored through the whole thing, but then they, at the end when I, I put um, a sock puppet in it just to, you know, it's kind of a joke. He's like, it's like, can, can I see that again, please? <laughs> he thought that was the best part. So yeah, you never never know what people is like. Is there a YouTube comment? Yeah. Is there a YouTube content for kids? Mine? No. Yeah. No. I mean, I guess guess kids can watch it if they want. It's not a nothing. Uh, Nothing no, 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 I mean, are, are there are there channels just oh, for absolutely. kids, like three years old? In fact, there, yeah. there are kids making. There's a there's one of the uh, hugely popular YouTube channels that is literally. It, oh, they must be oh, rich. Very, yeah, I'm sure. I mean, and all they do, it's like uh, maybe a six year old that has these uh, Easter eggs. You know, those plastic eggs, uh, full yeah. of random toys. And the entire YouTube channel is them opening up the egg and seeing what toy is inside. <laughs> and they have like two and a half million subscribers. <laughs> so you know, and th and those those videos get you know if you if you've got a kid, you know they don't watch a video once; they watch it fifty times. Yeah. So you, you get and they're likely more likely to accidentally click on an ad. So I'm sure that yeah. they're guys they're we're doing this money. wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, you know, I can't tell you how many times I've seen like a, a YouTube channel that just follows their cats around all day and has a million subscribers and say, I mean, I'm putting in too much work. I, yeah. I do that while I still do YouTube and my work, you know, follow the cats around. What are they up to? <laughs> Where are they? Are they healthy? Are, have they eaten? That's right. Yep. yep. Yeah. So how many cats do you have, Max? Uh, two. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't know if that's... Uh... You know, if you're a crazy cat man or, or what? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's my <laughs> sister. They have that in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yep. Well, you know, if you've watched our channel, you know the, the cats are part of the show. You know, and yeah. that's uh, you, you don't have a choice. If you've got if you've got cats, they they're gonna they're be all in, in everything. So yeah. yeah. But, uh, my my girlfriend started her own YouTube channel, following around the cats. So if you want to watch just cat videos, go watch that. <laughs> <laughs> So, and, and sponsors on YouTube, how are you about that? Have you got sponsors? Do you get paid a little bit? Companies that support you? We don't have any sponsors. Yeah, we, we don't, uh, not yet. We have 
Patreon. We have, yeah, we have a Patreon page, which we just actually started last week, yeah. uh, which is going surprisingly yeah, well. Yeah. And then we've got, you know, 20, 25 patrons. That's, that's like pretty that. amazing way, for way like one week. I, of, I yeah. get a dollar a month yeah, for Patreon. Yeah. And at one point <laughs> it, it jumped down to 90 cents. I don't know why. Oh, ah. weird. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, you know, I don't know if it'll last or not. You know, it, it, people can unsubscribe to that that Patreon page at any point. Of so, course, yes. Uh, but guys, if you want to support our channels, yeah. help us out on Patreon. It's a small amount for you, but if everybody chips in a little bit, you get more videos, better videos, better quality. I think it's worth it for everybody involved. Absolutely. It's and definitely it, worth it for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it allows us to, you know, get more interesting things to build our projects out yeah. of and uh, yeah. spend more time on them and things like that. Yeah. And justify it to our girlfriends and wives. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that especially. Yeah. And do more risky projects, things that can go wrong, you know. That's right. It'll pay a hospital bill at some point, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, <laughs> use mahogany instead of plywood for once. No. <laughs> That's right. One day. Let's, one let's day. not go too far here. <laughs> yeah. one of the, I've, got one one, of I've got one board of mahogany. I bought on eBay for 30 euros, which is like $30. <laughs> I haven't yes. used it yet. Yeah. I want to save it for something more weird. Going to be just the right project. <laughs> yeah, it's not even big. It's like as big as a cutting board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, one of the things that we also did, and this was a recommendation by one of the commenters, is to start an Amazon wish list of stuff and mm -hmm. uh and that actually we had something show up in the mail yesterday from the amazon nice. what, what was really? it it was uh it was a set of reamers oh and, very nice you know you just you, oh you, that's nice you put stuff in that you that you're looking for and you know i try and have I it, put that on my wish list absolutely yeah and you have it kind of have a variety of stuff as far as price ranges you know we, we're not asking for a lot of money for sure but it's not you know some some people the patreon thing's kind of abstract to people you know you you put money in and you don't know where it goes but the, the amazon thing is cool because you know like you'll see the thing you bought on the youtube channel for sure um i'll probably have like a mail kind of cool. segment where you can open it and thank the person who sent it and stuff like that i don't know hearing you say you got reamers i guess my, my fingers hurt just just thinking about that because <laughs> so i mean if, if i'm not well i've used them it seems like i just cut the cut the crap out of my fingers i think it's sharp you just don't touch, don't touch the sharp parts. Uh, not not correctly, them? apparently. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like you, you've got to hold it for them, right? I mean, I'm, I'm kidding somewhat, so I, but it just, I just, you know, you see these blades, and they're not like. <laughs> I'm not sure you are. I'm not even sure either. I was trying to cut some stuff, and I, you know, sometimes my hands get bloody. The, I'm not the sure listeners how that can't happens. see, but his his hands are covered in cuts. It's yeah. remarkable. Band aids. <laughs> no. Yeah, I showed up, and they said, "Oh, use a rock wall," and you know, all of a sudden, I just scraped my hands up, and, and I'm just ble bleeding. Oh, those flutes at the yeah, end—they're they're not the right. handle, you know. Oh, is that right? <laughs> I think that's just how they use yeah. them in Germany. You don't cut with the square part. <laughs> it's on the other side of the world, so obviously we use the other. I thought that was just the southern the hemisphere. The square part, it's, it's, called, it's called a brooch. <laughs> That's why I thought you use it. You, you <laughs> screw it in with the, uh, the, the pointy part, the point with the sharp ridges, and then you put something with it. Yeah. That's, yeah. You, know, I, I know, you know, I know a brooch isn't a uh, real common machine, but, yeah. you know, I, yeah. I feel like I use them too well. <laughs> <laughs> It makes that's how the milling machine works. They call it a milling machine here in the United States, but that's right. you know sometimes, sometimes use it as a brooch. <laughs> makes me want to do an, an episode of ju just using tools as, as wrongly as possibly oh, can yeah. imagine. Uh, well, good luck with those hospital bills. <laughs> <laughs> I I do that all the time. Yes. I, I prefer to use real <laughs> tools for that though, so you can put that one out. <laughs> If you listen to our commenters, we do it all the time too. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I, was I, say, think, I think this episode you can edit. The videos, yeah, use the tools, use wrong, the tools so. wrong. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. No, again, commenters, yeah. we still love you. But, you, know, you can be harsh. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, you can be harsh. Yeah, we really do. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you're an idiot, feel free to comment. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like that's a good good portion of our audience, I would assume. <laughs> commenters, not idiots. Right? That's right. <laughs> Well, this guy that said uh, the screws won't hold up in plywood, I'm still not sure if he was trolling or not. Yeah, and you do, there are definitely people that do. But you yeah. know, it's funny, recently we've yeah. gotten a collection of commenters that are just making fun of the other commenters that are telling us we're doing it wrong. I had a guy the other day yeah. that said, yeah. you know, I, I subscribed just so that I can tell you you're doing it wrong. Yeah, I thought that was fantastic. <laughs> Subscribe just can you not comment on your channel unless you, you subscribe you, you, you can't you can comment. Oh, okay So you wanted to make sure he was there for every exactly. video exactly. Exactly. Tell you 
What's didn't up? want to miss an opportunity to tell <laughs> to me. Drop his massive amount of knowledge on you. Yeah. Well, we won't disappoint. Or, or her, her knowledge. I, mean, I don't want to be discriminatory here. Right? I suppose there's <laughs> female right. trolls yes. too. Hey, how many, how many percent of females do you get? That. Oh, boy. Let me look. It's not good. It's, it's, not good, it's yeah. terrible. Yep, I'm doing it. I'm doing it I, now. I'll, my ass, mine's, mine's somewhere around 5 or 6%. That's higher than ours. <laughs> I'm surprised. I'm, what do you got? Really? I'm, I'm really pleased with mine. Yeah, but the ladies love your, uh, your sexy voice. I, I, I look up to read a number right we now. We have 2.1%. 2.1%. Wow, that's 2%? Terrible. 2%. Yeah. Yeah. Is that our nieces? Is there... Yeah, that, I think that's the combination of our two girlfriends and our oh, nieces. Oh, that's low. It's, it's, a little bit scary. <laughs> it's a little bit scary that, oh, these are females that watch your video. Like, how do they know? I guess we just accept that amount yeah. of tracking in our lives at this point. 6.8% yeah. yeah. females. That's great. He's killing us. Oh, yeah. 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 No, I, I, I wish it was a little more, you yeah. know. Yeah. Democratic. And I wonder which video they watch. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we, we we thought about for a while a way to kind of reach out and have something a little more universal, and uh, we I had this whole episode planned where we, it was when we were painting the lathe to draw uh, a compare. Make it pink. We're, we're, no, we we're going to do a comparison between the the skill set to put on makeup and the skill set to paint. Because there's actually a lot of commonalities when you start to think about it, and we had this like whole dichotomy between the two. My girlfriend filmed a bunch of stuff, and it just it came across as just kind of awkward and weird. Yeah. So we didn't Story just wasn't there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, feel, I feel like you're wearing a little bit more bass than you should be right now. <laughs> um. <laughs> Nobody told me this was it was just audio. Okay, That's I wanted right. to look nice. <laughs> <laughs> you put on a suit and tie, right? <laughs> I, I wish we had more girls, but I I don't yeah. know how we can a advertise for yeah. it. What what could could one do to get more more girls on know. the channel, uh, but, 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 or into but, but, making but, but, in general? It's you know, we're, we're big supporters of you know trying to get more women in engineering and problem solving uh, type jobs and everything. And I I think it's worldwide. It's not good. I know Google published their numbers and doing better than most, and it was still terrible. It's, it's bad, yeah. And uh, you know, we're looking at like again like our two nieces are are growing up into this. We have three nieces. One of them's just much younger, and mm -hmm. so uh, but. It's to I would like to see them go, you know, into whatever it is that they they desire, and it seems like there is a chance that they want to go into some type of engineering position or some type of uh, you know building things kind of position. And I don't know what you know what we could do to attract them to it. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, we're we're a I'm sure every woman out there wants to hear another middle-aged white guy explain to them like <laughs> the best thing that they can do is. But, um, I, th I think just yeah. ha having having more women YouTubers <laughs> in the genre is going to go a long way. Yeah. 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 But, you know, women, they do making, but maybe yeah. not the making we do. You know, with plywood machining, maybe they do more... Absolutely. Well, the you know, knitting. I stuff agree. like that which yeah. is just There's exactly the same as we do it's just um, different like materials my watches crafting youtube videos yeah. all the time i do follow a couple of channels that are uh women building things uh there's a female uh april wilkinson april wilkinson you know yeah, yeah i was gonna say carpenter but doesn't that, doesn't that doesn't that L laura kampf yeah uh, i've watched her but he, here's he, i mean doesn't that kind of point out the problem right if we say a, a women women in the makerspace and we all think of the same person wow yeah you know <laughs> i, I yeah. mean the, yeah, yeah. yeah of, of course there's a yeah. I, I wouldn't say it's a problem per se because it would be better if it wasn't that way yeah yep. I, yeah we takes could all time. benefit from it. it takes time yeah would be more diverse of yeah. course yeah well if any of your listeners have any advice for us any women out there that that uh that listen and maybe not watch the channels what's you know what do you want to see yeah what would interest you i still don't know how to do makeup so we'll have to see yeah <laughs> Uh, as far as construction and, you know, <laughs> what kind of projects, what things uh, yeah. are interesting to you, for sure. Yeah, that brings us into the progress section, I guess. What have you guys been doing this week? So this week we started on our Halloween episode. Um, so stick around for that. We're going we're gonna to explode a pumpkin, maybe by accident. <laughs> We've come close a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't want to give too much away, but it involves some high voltage and some propane and a pumpkin. Mm -hmm. Sounds illegal in Germany. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it may, may be illegal here. We don't. You yeah. Know, also, a little, little big. <laughs> I like to ask for forgiveness yeah. as the permission. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, let's see what else. I had a friend that is traveling down to Antarctica to do oh, some wow. filming. 
hmm. uh, needed uh, some custom equipment to keep camera equipment running in that kind of environment. Oh, that sounds like uh, such so an interesting project. Uh, I'm I'm very jealous, but man, I want to make sure that uh, his stuff works down there and yeah. things are going well. So I was able to, to create a couple devices and get those out to be produced. Uh, so he'll be able to take them with him. Yep, that yep. sounds amazing. Yeah, and we're still making progress on the on the mini grinder. Um, that that, mm -hmm. that occupies at least an hour a day of my life. So, uh, <laughs> which I actually I really enjoy. Uh, building machines, I think, is one of our favorite things to do. So yeah. pretty cool. Got yeah, some, I can tell. <laughs> got a little progress on my telescope project. I'm big into astrophotography, and uh, Orlando's not the best place in the world to do it, but. Uh, just kind of ever marching forward and making it a little bit better every time that I got in yeah. work. Well, you guys have Space Mountain here, right? Is that's that gives you good <laughs> space, yeah, <it's>, right? <laughs> I think that might be the tallest mountain in Florida too. It is. It's the tallest mountain in Florida, but not the tallest place. That is actually a uh, Skyrise building in uh, Miami. In Miami, yeah. <laughs> we're a very, very flat state for yeah. US listeners. It's that don't very know. flat. We don't have a. We're the actually we're the we're, I know we're the flattest state in the United States. We may be one of the flattest places in the world. It works well for astrophotography, actually, because the air moving over it doesn't get as turbulent. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Other than that, it's terrible. It's <laughs> you know, very wet, lots of light pollution. Yeah, yeah it varies between, between you know, f uh, five feet above sea level to five feet below sea level. That's right. <laughs> so, so, Jeremy, so what have you been up to? So, yeah, I guess, uh, I guess the biggest thing I've been up to, I... I just had this idea that I could put some, it's not going to be nearly as interesting as this project, but I put some LEDs in pumpkin and hooked it up to an ESP8266 board so I could turn it on and off with my phone, made a little video about that. So I'll have that out next week. Um, it possibly it'll explode, but I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not holding my breath for that either. Right. I, I didn't, I didn't put it in the video. Wow. It's a, actually, it is, it's amazing what you can do with these boards. You know, it generates a website on your local network and this is this runs for like three dollars wow and it's you know the whole project probably costs ten dollars and it's it's a it's a pumpkin that you can control with your smartphone or a computer or anything else it just generates a website for it and yeah it's a very accessible project and yeah i guess somebody could make it for halloween before it before it happens this year so how does it communicate is it uh, bluetooth it's over wi-fi it actually this little tiny little board the size of a, a quarter roughly it'll actually log on to your network and then you can It'll generate a local website. You type in the IP address, uh -huh. and it pu pulls up, you know, on, off, on, off, a bunch of buttons, and you can turn it on or off just with that. It's pretty, pretty amazing. It's and how's called, it called? A, well, the the board, kind of anal analogous to an Arduino, is called a Wemos D1 Mini, and the actual module is called an ESP8266, and it's it's the 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 uh, module was made as as a way to communicate via Wi-Fi. But on board is an 80 megahertz processor, which is, I believe, what is that, 10 times Arduino, as much yeah. of an Arduino? Is that, is that right? Yeah, I think so, Arduino is 16 to 20, depending on... Okay, so, so yeah, I guess, uh, was it eight, eight times, I guess? Is that right? No, that's not right. We're not math people. <laughs> yeah, I've still been working on my uh, table this week. Uh, I've, I've got these two wood slabs, and I've been... Um, Covering it with epoxy for a few days now and grinding and covering again and grinding again <laughs> or sanding. It just doesn't work out at the moment. Like I, I put 100 grams or 100 milliliters of epoxy on it and it was soaked up in a minute. Yeah. It mm -hmm. was just gone. Are you, are you uh, doing it on end grain? On end grain, yeah. yeah. that's why. <laughs> I mean, the, the whole structure yeah, of a tree is designed to suck up moisture. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I didn't know that apparently. <laughs> and then I thought, okay, now it's sealed though, so now I can put on another layer. Mm -hmm. And now it formed rings. Like it stopped at every border of the wood rings, oh. of the growth rings. Yeah. And then there was like no epoxy, then it started again, no epoxy, started again. So it's like a ripple effect now. Hmm. And I don't know when I will end with this. Hmm. Yeah, that, that's, you know, as a, as a YouTuber, you know, if you, if you run into a project, especially if you're doing episodic, ep, ep, you know, so it's not to be repetitively redundant, but, uh, you know, you, you get to the point where it's like, okay, if you, if you come across a, a roadblock, you can't pass or you want to give up or whatever. It's like, okay, do I just, just, do I just stop? Do I, you know, have an episode of like, we're quitting, <laughs> you know? So it's, yeah. uh, it's a challenge. It's kind of, I mean, one of the reasons I started the YouTube channel was to yeah. force myself to finish projects because I had 15 projects sitting around and no accountability for it at all. So it's like, okay, you know. 
<laughs> well, I, I never have the problem. Yeah, I've been listening. Yeah, listening to your earlier podcast, you you do work kind of uh, you know one project at a time, huh, Max? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh wow! Yeah, can't uh, we can't do that? Yeah. Well, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm already yeah. cutting up uh, the next project while I'm waiting for the glue to dry or the, the epoxy. Mm -hmm. But then I also I also have to keep the fan running to keep the dust low in the workshop, and yep. the epoxy takes two whole days. And now it's getting colder, so it's more like three days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Since three days, I can't use the workshop. Can I? I can't make any dust. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, I'm doing cat work <laughs> and more bad. computer stuff. Yep. <laughs> but I hope yeah. it's worth it for an awesome video. And oh, I'm yeah. going to tell everybody, don't worry, this is really easy. <laughs> <laughs> you make it look like it took you half an hour and That's no right. yeah. problem. Yeah. yeah, it's like, I've got to call this afternoon project. <laughs> 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 I've been drying this wood for one and a half years. Because, <laughs> yeah, you, you got this at a... You said you just found it on the side of the road and said, I'll give you 25 euros oh. foot or something. Was that oh, how that, that works? That's what I planned to do on, on another occasion, but then I figured out I, I couldn't pay for it. I, uh, a friend <laughs> of mine cut it down. He's like a wood that, that's right. cutting person. And he gave it for me to me. Paid like 10 euros, I think, for nice. just cutting it. Yeah, wood, woodworking yeah. is a whole, you know, we, I, we want to do more woodworking on our channel, but having a, a workshop mostly dedicated to, to metal fabrication those two, two things do not mix. You know, it, to have to have good metalworking tools, they all have a, a, a thin layer of oil on them to keep them nice. And uh, sawdust yeah. is the enemy of that. Yeah. So, I and, know. And that yeah. oil is the enemy of wood. So <laughs> it's tough to do both. <laughs> oh, I think too, just the fact I, I wish I could get into metalworking. Mm -hmm. Like, I just need the tools, basically. Yeah, that's one of those things that it's, uh, it's tough to do without the right tools. I could buy a welder, of course, but I wouldn't have the space. Uh, like, my garage is maxed out, I think, at the moment. So, But I'm moving fairly soon, I think, and then I'm going to get a full big lathe, bigger CNC welder. Awesome. Now, now you said you're moving. How are you gonna life, fit that life goals. In, how are you going to fit that into your RV? all that under your RV since you're moving in there <laughs> oh that's that's the next question like <laughs> we've we've got an electrical utility thing right in front of the only access to the garden where the RV could fit so try asking the city to remove this electrical <laughs> chical utility thing that will cost a fortune mm -hmm. <laughs> so we can't park it on the property anymore oh, mm. yeah first world problems <laughs> <laughs> And what I was always want to ask you, what do you actually plan to do with the lathe? <laughs> uh, we've had that question a lot, and you would think we'd have a good answer for it, given the amount of work we put in, but we don't have a clue. Well, you know, there are some projects that have been <laughs> in the back of my mind, and a few things we've used it for already. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's probably the second most used tool in the shop right now, and and it's not finished. It's not... You know, oh, wow. it's not to the precision we want it, yeah. but it doesn't even matter. It's it's a, an immensely helpful tool. Yeah, you can still make parts. So, yep. I feel like even a even a really terrible lathe is very, because mine mine's not very good whatsoever. But it's still, you need it every once in a while. At least I do. Yeah. I probably don't use it nearly as much as you, but that you know once yeah. a week yeah. or whatever, you just have to yeah. have to have it. And there there are there are definitely some projects like the the camera slider I was talking yeah. about earlier. Um, I'm definitely going to need the lathe for that. I'm going to do some precision bearings and stuff like that that is just going to need that swift. Yeah, we'll need it for the surface grinder yep. to build a couple of components. Yep. So. It's cool, you know, we, we build one tool to, to modify, to make tool another tool better, and we use that tool to build the first tool. It, it's <laughs> yeah. it's kind of, you know, you got to pick your order of operations, right, I guess. But <laughs> Yeah. It's it's like the guy from primitive uh, primitive technology. Oh my gosh! Yep. Yeah, yep. we got we got an amazing comment on one of our videos the other day that said uh, that that primitive technology and us should just start working towards some center point, you know, of <laughs> technology, <laughs> which I thought was really great. You know, it's, it's always an interesting thought to me. It's like I feel like you know I know a lot about making stuff. I, I, mean, I shouldn't say a lot, but you know, I'm an engineer. I've, I've made stuff, and it's like, where would I? Where would I start if I just got dropped on the earth, you know, 3,000 years ago? Yeah. Or, you know, say 6,000, you know, before even... Much civilization in general. Right. Yeah. You know, could I could I rebuild to the computer age? Yep. Pro probably not, but mm -hmm. could I get it to the steam engine? Have you guys seen that, that YouTube channel where he builds stuff from scratch? And I mean, like, from an elemental scratch? Like, he... Oh, you know, yeah. Like, he made glass. How he to, make to make everything. Glasses. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he's I wonder who like, pays for that stuff. It's a good question, and I, I think he's self-funded. To be honest, I'm not sure that his YouTube channel is pretty big. He's got these huge trips. 
But it's not that big. Like he has huge trips across America all the time. Yeah. Hmm. Well, it's you know you'd be surprised at the the price of that. You know you can, you know my I was in a long distance relationship for for four years and I I had flown to St. Louis, you know probably maybe twenty five times in two in three oh, years. Boy. Yeah, and it it could be oh. cheap. You know, two hundred bucks for a plane ticket if you if you yeah. know where to shop in the the right time. I, I just paid eighty to get to Pennsylvania and back this last time. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, you know, that sort of thing. If you're if you've got a lot of times, you'll have an excuse to be there anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, so you you never know. And he does have quite a few subscribers, so you know he can he can afford it. Makes better content yeah. for sure. Yeah. So I know, like our our solar eclipse video, we traveled for, and we were really excited to do that. So oh, where'd you guys go? Went to Wyoming. Oh, well, so we were. Why'd you go to Wyoming? What's that? I mean, why not like South oh, yeah, Carolina or something? Did we, you see the uh, ISS cross through the uh, the iris? We were. We, uh, unfortunately, we were close, didn't yeah, we were. It. Yeah, we didn't even know anything about it until after. We were probably fifty or sixty miles away from the point where you could do that. Uh, um, smarter every day was like in the next town over. Yeah, of course they were, because they're smarter. D- Destin, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they are indeed smarter than us every single <laughs> day. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We picked to answer your question. We picked Wyoming because uh, we knew the weather was going to be good. Mm. Every every yeah. place on the East Coast uh, was threatening with rain, and we figured if we're going to travel, we're gonna we're gonna make sure it's like a minute and a half that could be screwed up by a cloud. So let's yeah. give us oh, the best boy, chance we can. That would be frustrating. Yeah. 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 So yeah, we flew out there at high altitude too. That was yep. another. Yep. We're on top of a mountain. Get uh, thinner Laramie air Peak. above. Yep. Laramie Peak. Um, yeah. I don't know. That and just Colorado and Wyoming are beautiful yeah. places. To be to idea, be honest, so. we didn't even, we didn't think about it that much. We knew we wanted to go, and we we kind of picked a spot and said cool. It was only after you know that I got home and thought about it and said okay, well we you know we were on a four and a half hour plane ride we got the tickets so late that we had to fly into uh, uh colorado, colorado springs. springs which meant we were on the road for another like 11 hours to get to where we were going all of this for something like i said that could be screwed up by a single cloud and I, you know i got home and went, we were kind of crazy for doing that but uh, it was i'm all about the adventure it was, it was, it was yeah happen. i was gonna say it Road wasn't trip is about always that good. moment yeah, yeah it was it was about the adventure we went with our father um and and had a really great time yeah that, that alone was, would have been worth it you know even if yeah. we, we did the whole thing and you know got clouds for 10 minutes and lost the whole thing we still would have had a fantastic time it would have been yep. worth every penny and every every yep. hour no doubt it's so, awesome no doubt yeah sadly i i lived in, i've got an aunt and uncle that live in south carolina so i could have had a place to stay and stuff and i oh yeah i was debating going up there but i just yeah. just couldn't quite do it get, get the next <laughs> one a lot of people it is definitely worth yeah, it it is definitely was it? worth it, it is. yeah yes yeah. yeah. the I difference between anybody. seeing you know 80 90 percent and totality is everything yep. i mean it's really? such a different experience um yeah i mean i've seen i guess i got like a 90 percent annular at some point when i was younger hmm. and i remember it you know it was very interesting you know you got a little bit of like the dimming the odd coloration the the you know ground and everything else this was just everything like that to a degree that i could only describe it in a similar way like a roller coaster where your physiology is just telling you that this is not how it's supposed yeah. to be yeah it, it kind of sets off your fight or flight instinct yeah really yeah, yeah. and that, you can really easily ending. imagine you know three thousand years ago you didn't know it was going to happen oh, and it yeah. just you like okay world's ending you know yeah. this is it it was, it was amazing it, yeah and, and really i mean even you know i feel like we got good pictures but mm-hmm. i mean if, if it doesn't do it justice yeah, if you watch you our know. if you watch our channel there's probably a lot better technical video and photography out there than we did we did a pretty good job with it but um, I, I really want to capture the experience and what it was like to be there. Yeah, and I think sure. you did one of the best videos for that that Thanks. I've seen. So. Thanks. It's an interesting thing. I mean, because as far as YouTube goes, it's like before it, everybody's looking for videos on that, I'm sure. But after, not so much. But yeah. you yeah. can't have the results until... Yeah. yeah. And, you know, the market got pretty saturated. Um, there was just the market, an, yeah. Yeah, an amazing <laughs> amount of people doing solar eclipse videos. You know, yeah. the, the state of Wyoming doubled their population. In, in an hour, it was amazing. They yeah. literally did. They had twice as many people there as they normally yeah. do. Really? I, yep. I was talking to a friend of mine that's in South Carolina, and you know, they they went through Clemson, you know, t- tires and stuff. And mm-hmm. he said it was really weird because there were a ton of people there at the college and stuff 
but they weren't all dressed in orange and white. They were dressed like just like normal people. So it was like yeah. a, it was, it was a really weird experience. <laughs> That's crazy. A yeah. Any any attention we can we can drive towards that solar eclipse video would make me happy because it's one of our <laughs> under underwatched videos and one of the ones we're most proud of. So yeah, yeah. we've got many of them. <laughs> That's true. No, I'm just any any science content. I think um, you know we talk about this. You know we've got a lot of stuff that's really popular. That's machining. Um, we don't want to be just a machining channel. Yeah. But Close. a lot of the other stuff doesn't draw the same kind of attention. But yet you know that's the stuff that is the most important <coughs> to us. I think. So. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And it, you know, you know it, maybe do it Mythbuster styles with explosions. You're always on the right side, yeah. like with your pupkin. That's More explosions, <laughs> the better we do. I, you know, one of my friends at work has been telling me that every single week. When are you going to blow something up? So yeah, it's just a matter of time. Because <coughs> we don't know when it's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. What, you're using propane or propane. You ever use like cordite or anything? Was it cordite? Cordite. Yeah. No, we haven't done any of that. I've never used it myself. You, you know, one of the one of the things I struggle with too is, you know, how how, how much of your content can be used to to make weapons? <laughs> yeah, I'm a little conscious of that. You know, we've been and, careful on chemistry for that kind of thing yeah. too. Like, I don't think we put anything yeah. chemistry. I guess we might this time around. <clears> a little, a little bit, but we'll only. We're gonna teach you how to make green fire. Oh, nice. Yeah. So. Oh, pennies. Nope. 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 No. Boric acid. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hey, Max, is it? I saw a YouTube a German YouTuber. He was making some sort of, some sort of throwing. Jörg Sprave. What? Jörg Sprave is his name. The Slingshot Channel. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, mm -hmm. yeah. You can't we we sure love the Slingshot Channel. Apparently there's only one German. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, but he was, he was making something, something that That's threw. it for today. Thanks <laughs> bye-bye. <laughs> Let me show you its features. And he said, he said that you couldn't have uh, ninja stars in Germany. Is that, is that true? Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's lots of forbidden weapons here. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wow. The, the one, uh, but I mean, so, how, do they, how do they say, oh, it's a ninja star now. <laughs> it's too sharp, now you can't have it. Yeah. <laughs> we used to make ninja stars out of CDs, you know. Would, you, would the cops show up and arrest you for... Uh, would Angela they, Merkel show it, up? And, <laughs> if they wanted to arrest you, they would do it for that, yeah. <laughs> they would say this is illegal. Wow. Cookie cutters, maybe even. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Star did, did you see that time that, was it the drone flew in and was hovering around Angela Merkel and she was just kind of like, what is going on here? Did you see... It was a couple of years no, ago. No, I, I, I've seen the <laughs> helicopter with Vladimir Putin. <laughs> <laughs> I must have missed all of this. I sadly missed this. I just, I just think like, you know, either of those things, if it happened in America, the Secret Service would just, yeah, I mean, liter literally might kill somebody for that, but they yeah. seem to react pretty, uh, you know, yeah. pretty annoyed, yeah. but not, yeah. not that annoyed, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I think we're not that, um, not that <clears throat> worried here. All right, guys, I guess it's time to wrap it up now. Where can people find you online? Twitter, YouTube, website? Sure, so our, our YouTube is Physics Anonymous. Um, if you just search for that or go to youtube.com slash Physics Anonymous. Uh, same for our Instagram, uh, Patreon page, same thing. I think that's all we've got. My YouTube, Jeremy S. Cook, that's my channel. Also my Twitter handle. I don't use Instagram, Facebook, or anything else. So that's, that's the deal. And you can find me on Twitter at Max underscore Maker underscore YT and on Instagram, Max Maker YouTube. Yeah, thank you guys for being on the show. We really appreci appreciate it. It was a good show, I think. Yeah, thanks. We were really, uh, really great to, have, to be on. Yeah, I really enjoyed this. Thank you. Yeah, a lot of fun. Thanks, guys. Yeah, hope we can have you soon again. Absolutely. Yeah, let's go blow something up. Let's do it at your place next, Max. That's right. <laughs>